So the Pelicans did not have a good bubble. In fact, they were disappointing as hell. Zion didn't even really play like that. Lonzo missed a million shots. And it was just bad. It was bad all around. Zion also looked really bad defensively. And I guess that's the first place to look at is like, what what is up with Zion? I mean, we were off for five months and the guy still wasn't ready to go. I mean, is it a matter of his weight? Are his knees just screwed? I don't know, man. But I think it's pretty obvious that that is the most important thing with this team. I mean, if Zion's not going to be the guy, then all this talking that we've done about the Pelicans the past like year or whatever kind of doesn't matter. I mean, there's still some things here, but outside of Zion, it's it's not it's not great. Uh, Brandon Ingram will get a max contract this offseason. That's fine. Still questioning if Lonzo is the right guy for this team. I mean, look, I've been on Team Lonzo, but he was really bad in the restart. And it's like all of his problems that he kind of overcame during the season came back. And I'm not saying trade him in the offseason. Like, I assume he'll be a starter for this team next year. But it just makes you wonder about Lonzo's long-term thing. I mean... He came into the regular season making threes, new jump shot, finishing better at the basket than he ever has, even if it was still a little iffy when it came to contested layups. And then it's like he just forgot how to put the ball in the basket. And he still doesn't shoot that many free throws, and when he does, he's not good at them, and the pull-up jumper isn't still really a thing. I don't know, Lonzo, he's just such an interesting and kind of awkward player in terms of what he's good at, but the things that he's not good at kind of makes his playmaking skills like a little worse than they actually are you know what I mean uh, but but still a lot of it is the defense still with him I mean if, if Lonzo can be a, a really really good defender which he was for the Lakers at times then I think that fixes a lot of the problems but defensively he was not the same guy for the Pelicans for most of this season so I don't know what to make of that and the thing with Lonzo is he's extension eligible this offseason. And there's a chance that the Pelicans just let the next season ride out before they see if they want to re-sign him or whatever. But that could create some tension between him and the front office. There's a chance that David Griffin doesn't see Lonzo as a long-term fit, even if he traded for him. There's a chance that whatever new coach they're going to sign doesn't see Lonzo as a long-term fit. So we'll just have to see. I mean, I guess if I was going to ask myself right now, like what would I be comfortable giving Lonzo per season for his rookie extension? I mean, probably like at the most $12 million a year or so. I feel like a four-year, $48 million contract or something like that for Lonzo is probably fair. But again, we still have another season before... The Pelicans would be forced to make a decision on his uh, extension, so there's a chance it's not even really worth uh, talking about like that right now. But I did mention the coach, so let's talk about the coach. Gentry's gone. I think that was fine. I don't think Gentry is that good of a coach, pretty much. The question is, who do you hire? I mean, my pick for everyone is Kenny Atkinson, but only one team can get him, so... In terms of other guys, you know, Ty Lue is out there. I think it's tough to get a super real gauge on Ty Lue because he was obviously running plays for LeBron, which means you let LeBron do everything. The things I do remember were that Ty Lue oftentimes chose offense over defense on those Cleveland teams in terms of the lineups he used. And those Cleveland teams were good defensively for a little bit, and then they kind of stopped caring about defense like that and this Pelican team needs to care about defense so take all that for whatever you will I don't totally know but I think the type of coach that you would need for this Pelicans team is probably a coach that's willing to get a little weird with it you know somebody who is confident enough in their game plan to be like, all right, this is what we're going to do around Zion. Kind of similar to what happened with Coach Bud 
with the Bucks, where he steps in, he's immediately like, all right, we're going to get shooting around Giannis, make the moves that I need for that to happen. But you also need to be a coach who's got a bit of a track record in order to demand that out of your front office. And I mean, you assume that whoever David Griffin signs, there's going to be expectations established from the beginning, but we'll still just have to see what it is because... I feel like sometimes front offices hire a coach with the idea of, okay, please fix our team. And then other front offices hire a coach with the idea of, we know we need to change around our roster and we think you're the coach who is right for what we plan on our roster looking like. And we're just going to have to see how it goes. Now, in terms of potential roster things, we talked about Lonzo a little bit. The other thing to talk about, I think, is the center next to Zion, and I've been pretty pro Derek Favors, but I can understand the value in wanting to put a shooter next to Zion at that position. The thing is, is I don't totally know how you get that guy, because it's not like there's a whole lot of those guys around, even if there's more than there were like five years ago. So looking at the Pelicans' money situation, when they declined Darius Miller's contract, there'll be a... 76 million you add the 27 million that's going to be ingram's max or whatever it is that takes you to 103 salary cap was originally going to be 115 million for this upcoming year which would give you 12 million to play with but the pelicans are also going to have a draft pick and that guy is probably going to make about five so there's just not a lot of money to find difference makers on the open market for this team and all of this is assuming that the salary cap is still going to remain at $115 million. It could be lower. So at that point, I mean, if you wanted to get a different center next to Zion, somebody who could stretch the floor out, it's tough. I mean, you would potentially have enough for, let's say, Myers Leonard or Aaron Baines. But, you know, Baines is old and has been hurt two years in a row. Myers Leonard is kind of inconsistent, although he's probably having his best season with Miami. Maybe. So those are a couple options for you. The other thing to talk about is the Pelicans draft pick. I think this is uh, something that is kind of a big deal because I just mentioned they don't have a lot of money in free agency. They've got some trade assets. I mean, you know, J.J. Reddick's an expiring. Maybe a veteran team wants him. Lonzo could end up getting moved. We just talked about that. Uh... And they do have the Lakers pick. So there's something there for the Pelicans. But even then, I don't know, like, who are you really trading for? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm sure Buddy Heald would be good for this team. But even then, they need more defense and they need offense right now. And if I was going to think about some sort of a defensive player for them to trade for, I mean, the only one I would think of is Miles Turner, but I don't really think he's available. But the fit is kind of natural there. Anyway, I think I was originally talking about the draft pick. So the Pelicans have an 86% chance, or really like a 98% chance of getting either the 12th or 13th pick. So they're probably going to end up with that. Um, After looking at a couple of mock drafts, it seems that Aaron, it's either Naismith or Nesmith or whatever out of Vanderbilt could be their guy. Very good shooter. 6'6 with a 6'10 wingspan. Seems like he could be a good defensive player as well. I think that'd be a good fit for them. I mean, he sounds like a 3 and D guy. Uh, Perhaps RJ Hampton could be available there. He's more of a wing dude as well. Although he's more of a guy who wants the ball in his hands. And I mean, between Drew, Lonzo, and Ingram, and Zion, to be fair, um, might be too many guys who want it. I don't know. I mean, personally, my two favorite guys in this draft are Devin Vassell and Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, But they're probably going to be gone by the time the Pelicans are drafting. So yeah, I think there's a lot of interesting decisions that this team's going to have to make soon. In terms of, uh, you know, Lonzo's contract. If Lonzo's a long-term option for them. Um, if Favors is the right center next to Zion, this upcoming draft, uh, where does Jackson Hayes fit into any of this? Um, and also, like, Lonzo and Ingram and Zion, these guys just have to be better defensively. I mean, we can say all this stuff about getting a coach and probably getting a defensive-minded coach. 
and drafting someone who can help him out on defense. But, you know, if Zion's going to be bad on that side of the floor and Ingram and Lonzo are not going to show off the same defensive potential they showed off in L.A., then this team is just probably not going to be that good, to be honest. I know some may think about a Drew trade and all of this as well. And, I mean, you know, Drew's contract doesn't have too much time left on it. I'm of the opinion that you just keep him because what are you going to get that's as good as Drew Holiday? I mean, maybe there's some sort of move out there where you trade Drew for a guy who makes pretty close to his money, who could just kind of shift the dynamic of the team a little bit. Like, maybe you think the offensive center is out there and you trade Drew to get him. I mean, the one that I randomly thought of was Nikola Vucevic, but I'm not sure if that's a good move for either team, to be honest. But perhaps there's something like that around the NBA. But yeah, that's all I got on the Pelicans. A lot of decisions to be made, a new coach to be hired. Is Zion actually able to play? It's interesting. I think this offseason is a relatively big deal for them. I don't think they should really do the whole, like, build for three years from now thing. Like, you know, assuming Zion's healthy, you're kind of ready to go right now. So let's uh, let's go for it. Not in the sense of trading all your future picks or whatever, but in the sense of if you don't think Alonzo is the guy, then don't hesitate to move off of him or... Maybe you end up trading one or two of the Lakers picks for the sake of instant improvement. Like, I don't think that's ridiculous, assuming that Zion is healthy. So, see what they want to do.